Hey guys, Jumbo here. Um, welcome to World of Warcraft patch 5.0.4. Going to be doing a Fury Warrior PvE guide to start with. So, without further ado, if you look at the screen, you're going to see you'll see some menus. Uh, all you have to do is click on one of the menus, and it'll take you to exactly where you want to go. We're going to be covering well. You can see what we're going to be covering. Anyway, without further ado, the menu. Right, there's your menu. Pick on one of those buttons. There's a return button at the bottom of the screen if you want to get back to this stage at any point. Why are you still here? Did you miss the part where I said click the button? Don't tell me your mouse has run out of batteries, hasn't it? Seriously, nothing's going to happen. It's just going to roll on. Wow. You're really not pressing that button, are you? No? You're not pressing it? Hey, you. The one who's just tabbed over to another window. Come back and press the damn button. Don't leave me sat here waiting. Oh, I see how it's going to be. You're going to sit there and just... Waste time. When you could be learning. What's better than learning, hey? This is what school's meant for. Okay, for anybody who's actually still watching this video, well, this section of the video, I take your hat, my hat off to you for being so stubborn. Now, it's a little giveaway. It's a secret giveaway. So don't say anything. Shh. If you like, comment, and subscribe and start the comment with Mr. Harry Balls. You've got a chance of winning, uh, what should we say? I got Portal 2. I think I'll do Portal 2 for now. You can win Portal 2, yeah, as long as you've got obviously a Steam account, or get one, and then I'll be able to give it to you on there. So, you know what to do, Mr. Harry Balls. <laughs> Anyway, enjoy it. Okay guys, we're going to start by going over the uh, talent tree. Now, as you can see, the talent tree has changed greatly. A lot of things are situational or preference, shall we say. So what we'll do is we'll start at the bottom and we'll work our way the bottom being the top bottom being the bottom number not the bottom as in the bottom of the bottom the bottom of the bottom is the top of the bottom so we'll start at the top which is the bottom and we'll work to the bottom which is actually the top good now we've got that sorted we're going to look at <laughs> we're going to look at juggernaut um, as it says on the tin you can charge every 12 seconds instead of every 20 seconds very good for getting around um, double time you can charge twice in 20 seconds and it's a 20 second cooldown good but I can't see many ways that you're gonna need to be charging like that you never know though next we have Warbringer Warbringer stuns the target for three seconds pretty good let's see how it works out though I don't see it as being the best I've gone for Juggernaut because 12 second charge it is quite good. I mean, you shouldn't have to charge more than tw every 12 seconds anyway. But we can see how the fights go. Enrage Regeneration is on, on our next line, which is exactly what it says on the tin with a one minute cooldown. 
a second wind is the best survivability one I've seen. Impending victory. You do damage, you heal yourself, and if you kill or gain honor, you do 20% for your next heal. For leveling, I suppose that's quite good actually. Okay, the next line we have is you've got a choice of Staggering Shout, Piercing Howl, or Disrupting. Now, I've just chucked in Staggering Shout for now, and I'll show you why in a minute. Staggering Shout, all your snare targets become rooted. Piercing Howl snares all your targets within 15 yards, reducing their movement speed by 50% for 15 seconds. Good. D interrupts all the no, disrupting shouts. It probably helps if I tell you the, the name of the ability. Interrupts all spell casts within 10 yards and prevents any spells. It's nice. It's actually like a second pummel, basically. 10 yard range. Yeah. I mean, I've lost pummel off my bar. Fantastic. Never mind. If you need to interrupt, then yes, this is good. You know, all of these are good, depending on what you're doing. Obviously, everything depends on that. Next, we've got on the next line, Bladestorm. Bladestorm is one I really need to find out about. You do 100%, 120% weapon damage, but you're using both weapons. Now, as a Fury Warrior, both weapons, that's a lot of damage. But I just want to find out. Um, it's on a one and a half minute cooldown, which is a long time. Shockwave. It does 12.3k damage, which is then increased by whatever calculations they do these days. And it's a four second stun. Pretty good. Especially as it hits anything that's in front of you in a cone for 10 yards, obviously. But if you've got one person there, if you've got 25, you'll still stun them all. Dragon's Roar. Now this is ridiculously OP. Ignores armor, guaranteed crit, everything like that. But the biggest risk is it's on a one minute cooldown. One minute cooldown is a very long time in any fight. I mean, it can burst your damage up, yes. But how beneficial is it? it might be a long wait, you know. It's worth trying out, it could be useful in PvP, you never know. As I said, it's situational, which means if you've got a mob to kill, Dragon Roll would be pretty impressive. So would Bladestorm, for that matter. But then so would Shockwave, because you could stun them all at the same time. Right, enough confusing ourselves. Next line, which we can reach. You've got Mass Spell Reflect. Reflects everybody within 20 yards. Pretty OP. Safeguard. You charge at somebody and you reduce their damage taken. Uh, yeah, reduce damage taken. And Vigilance, you take people's damage. So if you put it on tank, you'll take the tank's damage. The only problem I've seen with this, it used to enrage you, they've taken that off now, which is frustrating. Because a lot of Fury Warriors would be kill committing suicide. And then you've got the level 90 tree, which we can't do anything with yet. Avatar, you go into a great colossal hulk for like was it 20 seconds 20 percent increased damage and 30 percent extra rage you're unstoppable it's sounds like the best three minute cooldowns not too bad either bloodbath 30 percent of your damage is as a bleed over six seconds and you reduce their movement speed that's not too bad either but as i said when we hit level 90 everything should change and then you've got Stormbolt, which I think for PvE may be more beneficial. You do 300% weapon damage to targets that are permanently immune to stuns, which means if you hit... Ah! I can't, oh, I can't learn it yet. The... Where's my abilities? Let's rook throw. Rook throw. Let's put that there. Close it. So. The hell? Oh. Trinket went off. 300 times. 300% of weapon damage. 
that hit just then would have been 12k basically I don't know 30 second cooldown that's not actually that bad but it's kind of one to play out and see how it works basically the abilities are situational bladestorm we all love miss bladestorm it has its benefits aoe wise single target i'd say no dragon roar aoe again shockwave 20 second cooldown you can use it quite frequently and it does well you just saw that basically i can't really say more than that and that's only a 20 second cooldown and a four second stun so that's my preference glyphs glyphs um i'm not going to go through you i'm sure you guys can read them yourself currently i've just gone for increased healing so when i hit something there you go i'm 3.3k heal that's not bad although it's only ever on one hit i've gone for hindering strike which means if i can find there's cleave right so if i cleave there you go hindering strike is now on the target hindering strike reduces their movement speed by 50 percent for eight seconds think of it like a hamstring or a piercing howl and you can run in and do that to two targets see that's quite impressive anyway we are subtracting from where we were okay basically have a look through the abilities basically they are situational recklessness I'm not keen on looking at that glyph raging blow or the raging blow glyph doesn't seem too bad but it feels more like it's a um, AoE one now until we know what we're going to be going up against we don't know how beneficial that'll be rude interruption that seems like a nice solid one as always if you can interrupt unending rage if you get your rage that high and then whirlwind I don't know how beneficial whirlwind is but that's for another time so that's a very quick overlook at all the glyphs and which ones I think are beneficial for fury basically if I've missed something out or if there's anything you want to question feel free to ask okay so now I'm going to look at the abilities in a kind of rotation I have to say kind of because I haven't actually solved it out fully but I think there's enough here to actually show something substantial um, for the moment go off what my action bar is doing I start off with battle shout obviously charge colossal smash bloodthirst bloodthirst because it gives extra rage then it's uh, wild strike if you become enraged actually use raging blow because at the moment raging blow is hitting like a truck if you watch on the far right hand side you'll actually see I'm doing some hundred odd K hits with it thunderclap isn't too bad you'll see it being used in a moment I do keep forgetting to use it shockwave use it every time it's off cooldown um, I think I had it hit up to 50k it's a nice ability so what I'm using is how do I explain how I'm using it basically bloodthirst as often as it's up wild strike use it wisely when it procs spam the hell out of it raging blow I I'm trying to do colossal smash then a raging blow and it does the most damage um, I do sit for a good point at 30 I don't know 33 to 35 K DPS that's only with battle shout with recklessness and with my trinket I don't know why I'm using the skull but I am 
it does a hell of a lot more. Um, it's quite impressive the way the abilities are. I can't say there's a guaranteed rotation because there isn't. Wild Strike is a spam the hell out of it when it procs. Raging Blow seems to hit quite well right now, but that's I do have a fair bit of mastery. So the two, the three you've got to worry about is Shockwave, uh, Bloodthirst, and your Colossal Smash. Colossal Smash. Yeah, Colossal Smash. That's the three you want to worry about. The other abilities only ever use them when they actually proc properly. Uh, Raging uh, Wild Strike. I remember these abilities. Wild Strike, use it, but be, just obviously watch what you're doing with it because you will rage starve using it. Also, remember to be in um, arm stance, whatever the hell they call it these days. I can never remember. Battle stance, even. That's single target. But as you can see, it's quite good. When it comes to AoE, use whirlwind actually increases the target the amount of targets you hit with raging blow so you could technically go colossal smash whirlwind raging blow now that should in theory hit like a flipping truck is it well you can see my abilities and what they're hitting for here you know, there is actually quite a substantial amount of damage being done, especially as I don't know the rotation. I haven't enchanted or or trans uh, transmogged. It's not transmogging, is it? Reforged. I haven't reforged anything properly. I haven't done any of these things, but you can see it yourself. It's fairly substantial. Um, I'm being attacked by a mosquito. What timing? <laughs> yeah, you can see the abilities, you can see how they work. Um, I've got Cleave down, I haven't really used it. Cleave, it's not too bad. It's good for CCing with a staggering shout. But yeah, these are the main abilities, and this is a rough idea on how to use it. I may put a little screen up a little guide thing up I don't think I can though because it's not so much it's it's what procs and when it procs and that's when to use it really so charge to start with colossal smash bloodthirst wild uh, shockwave having these abilities is so confusing man half of them are tank if you think about it well, you got Shockwave, which was tank I've never really used. Wild Strike, which is pretty much a Death Knight. Which one is it? I can't remember. So yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Keep your Colossal Smash up, keep your Bloodthirst up, Shockwave every time it's off cooldown, spam Wild Strike when it procs, use it sparingly when it doesn't proc try and time raging blow with your colossal smash I don't know what more there is to say about it at this point in time so it's a case of do it try it test it see it other abilities like blade storm well I might actually put a, a short section in there for, so you can actually see what blade storm does and I might do the same for uh, what do you call that ability dragon's roar whatever it's called I'll put those two in and see how they pan out what sort of damage they do and then I'll let you guys know I'll put it in there somewhere anyway that's it I'll let you have a look I'll leave it to run on for a little bit longer so you can just see um, it's not bad actually I've got to admit it is actually quite interesting once I've nailed the rotation with timings and everything else I will actually amend the video or put a link in at this point for it so you guys can see or just get a better understanding of it until then keep watching
Okay, as promised, here's one with Blade Storm. Um, I do give these ones a proper thorough testing to make sure that I'm not being biased or anything like that. Um, don't use it straight off, as you can probably imagine. I want to work on building up my stats. Well, it's not stats. I want to get my bleeds up. I want to get my rage up. I want to get enraged, I want to get a colossal smash and a recklessness off just beforehand to give it a thorough test to push it right to the maximum. As you can see, I'm doing, if I keep the damn stop mouse clicking, I'm doing about 27 odd K DPS, then I hit Blade Storm, and as you can see, it jumps up a lot, which is good, but. one and a half minute to cooldown is way too far in between for my liking you know AoE it's not too bad but couldn't keep wait, wasting it in that sense because that's what it feels like a long waste okay and as promised now we have I can't remember the name ability Dragon's Roar, whatever you call it. This is insane. I'm doing 40k DPS, which is beautiful. But, as you'll see in a minute, because I don't want to use it straight off, I want to get everything up, as I said before. So, I get a recklessness off. Oh, I don't need recklessness off, do I? There you go. 77k per target, which was 150 something k across the board that is quite shocking to say the least that is some seriously high figures but one minute cooldown to use one single ability I still don't know still not 100% sure on it you know I'm sat there, I'm debating, I'm trying to work it out which I think is more beneficial. And not 100% sure on it. I mean, don't get me wrong, Dragon's Roar, whatever the heck it's called, I'll find out and correct myself if I'm wrong. As you can see, which I should use it any second now. Now, hits like a truck. 125k between the two targets. Don't get me wrong, it hits something unbelievable. But, is it enough? And to be honest with you, I don't think it is. DPS, uh, DPS, PvP, you could global somebody with that thing. It's insane. But would you go for that over over um, shockwave? Every twenty seconds, stun them for four seconds. Combine that with uh, your pummel. Combine that with gag order, heroic throw as well. Combine that with um, charge, which interrupt. Well, it doesn't. Inter you could interrupt with a charge. You could lock somebody down. I don't know. I'll leave that one for you guys to decide on. <laughs> I can't. Okay, and without further ado, we're going to hit the last thing, which is your abilities themselves. We've covered all aspects, and if you've actually managed to watch this whole video, then you're a trooper. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a bit of a long one I know but I'm trying to cover everything so you can jump between see what you want to see you know zone out of what you don't want to see go on from there anyway spellbook abilities one of the key things I always find useful is understanding what abilities you have and what they do because if you understand that you can work out how to work them into your abilities 
Okay, let's just start from the beginning. We got Battle Shout, which does what it's always done. Increases your attack power. Generates 20 rage. Cleave, which is for AoE and for snaring, as I've got it set right now. Battle Stance is your ability that you want to be using. Uh, it generates height rage, as you can see, from normal melee attacks. Single target, basically. Colossal Smash. We all know it reduces armor. Berserker Rage now increases physical damage done by 10% for 6 seconds. I don't believe it did that before. I believe that was um, an enrage that you received. Commanding Shout's Commanding Shout. Berserker is kind of an AoE one. As you can see there, generates some rage from normal melee attacks and some rage from damage taken. Yeah. Deadly Calm, key bound in, key bound, macroed in with Heroic Strike, or Cleave, pretty good, one minute cooldown, it's not too bad. Bloodthirst, one of your main abilities, you spam it every time it's off cooldown. I've got it glyphed so it increases, does a ton and a half of healing. Hits with your main hand weapon, so you could maybe key bind, uh, macro in so you switch weapons because... For Wild Strike, you want your most powerful weapon in your off hand and your weaker one in your main hand. That's just for Wild Strike, I'll show you when we get there in a second. But as you can see, for Bloodthirst, you might want it the other way around. You can make macros for these things if you so wish. Defensive Stance, we're not tanks, don't worry about it. Charge, there's a charge, <laughs> full stop, dive with a sword. If anything gets a bit touchy, a bit irritable, a bit worse looking in the situation, well, whatever, you know what I mean. If it's going wrong, hit that button. Disarm is a disarm. Heroic throw is, well, exactly what it says on tin. You do a throw, which is kind of heroic, except it's only 50% weapon damage. Dragon Roar is what ability I've got right at the second. It does stupidly insane amount of damage um, yeah ridiculous if I didn't have this here I'd have either blade storm or shockwave shockwave is still quite good I'm still keen on shockwave but this dragon roar ignores all armor guaranteed crit knockback stun as well it's unbelievable to say the least, it really, really is. Fear, intimidating shouts, fear, execute. I haven't been able to hit with execute anything because I'll be damned if I'm flying out. It says 62k on there, but that says Dragon Roar says 23k on there. I was doing 75k single targets. So you imagine what execute does. Pummel is an interrupt. Blah de blah. Hamstring is hamstring, as we all know. Raging Blow seems to be hitting quite well, but it may be due to my mastery, which I mean, it's not too bad. It hits hard right now. So, that's that. Heroic Leap, you jump around the air, flying, doing some damage. Rallying Cry generates your health. You know these things. Heroic Strike, one last second cooldown, 25 rage. Uh, doesn't hit that hard if you're using one handed weapons it hits a lot harder and it also slows them that might be good for uh, PvP single minor fury could be interesting recklessness is what it's always done I've gone for safeguard here it's intervene with mobilization reduces uh, removes immobilization effects basically taunt Shattering throw, shattering throw, throw itself. She will thunderclap is the same. Spell reflect, victory rush, staggering shout. Staggering shout is where is it? Let's clear that off. I'll show you on that. So if I hit him, right, so you can see I'm hovering over cleave. Fine, I'll shout. So if I cleave and then I do staggering shout. You see how the ground around them? Oh, I missed him. 
but the ground around them goes that's a five second route so staggering shouts not too bad whirlwind is whirlwind sunder armor wild strike here we go a quick strike with your offhand weapon that deals 220 percent weapon damage plus 930 and causes mortal wounds on the target mortal wounds grievous wounds to target reducing the effectiveness of any healing received for 10 seconds that is your main ability that's your spam it like a whore ability blood surge Ah, bloodthirst hits have a 20% chance of lowering the global cooldown by to one second and reducing the rage cost by 30% 20 uh, by 20 of your next three wild strikes that's your wild strike prop basically mastery have changed that's exactly what it says on tin meat cleaver is now passive Deep wounds is passive. Parry. My parry's through the roof, by the way. Enrage. You can read it there. More strike, bloodthirst, cloth smash, critical strikes, and critical blocks and rage you, generating 10 rage and increasing the physical damage done by 10% for 6 seconds. The exact same as Berserker Rage, which is nice. Flurry, same as before, I believe. You're yeah it looks pretty much some second wind nice bit of heals single minor fury hang on juggernaut you can charge every 12 seconds instead of 20 that's what i've got single minor fury when you deal with one-handed weapons all damage is increased by 35 percent and your offhand weapon will deal an additional 35 percent that is uh, a lot allows you to deal with a pair of two-handed weapons that is a hell of a lot. I think I might actually make a quick video on that later. Not now, but later on. Anyway. I bid you adieu. <laughs> and finally, guys. You can take you can breathe easy now. This is just me saying thank you for watching. Uh if you managed to watch the whole thing then God bless you. <laughs> If you didn't, I don't blame you. Um, if you have found it helped, feel free to thumbs it up, to subscribe, post a comment. If you think there's something that you don't agree with, chuck a comment down, let me know what you think. If you've got any questions or if you need anything answering, then yeah, feel free. Ask away, let me know, and go from there. But for the time that I've given, for the time that you guys have spent watching this it's much appreciated honestly anyway till next time enjoy <laughs>